You ready? Okay, we're all set. Brian's going to show us fancy finials. These are sea urchins that I uh, I pick them up at Amazon or wherever. This one's like sea urchins. Can you see? And I'll uh, make a finial for the bottom, and then I'll make uh, the top one, and I'll put a uh, eyelet in it after then. So that when I I when I get done with the finials at home, I stain them and uh, spray them with. Uh, lacquer and put some different sprinkles on it or whatever and then glue them together so I'll be doing that so I'm, I'm going to fit it after I round this I'll uh, I'll use this to uh, measure the inside to make an mortise to go inside and then I'll, I'll make an overlap to uh, so it it uh, fits on the top put it there so I don't drop it and break it. so Ryan what do you cut those here just right What's that? What do you do your hole with? Oh. Because I know they're put it, it comes, on the bed. Put it, it on comes. the put it on the bed. Okay. It comes they come kind of rough. Right. So usually I, I found this. Everything, everything on the bed. Okay, but I can't follow this. you, you're moving around too much. I found that uh, a tapered grinding stone, I guess, on Amazon I think. I, I don't know, but when I do it I just take them real gently because they're dent they crush if you if you squeeze them, and uh, when I do, you just do that to eventually you get it where it's spinning free. And I also take this this uh, it's a water-based glue called Modge Podge, and uh, you can paint through an acid brush. You can paint the inside of it, to, and it does reinforce the uh, the uh, the friendly, the uh, uh, or sea urchin. I, I learned a lot by watching YouTube. Cindy Drozder, she's uh, probably one of the foremost uh, turners of finials. I mean, she, I, she's, they, she's always at the uh, symposium. She's pretty well recognized as probably the best, at least that I know of. But she has a lot of good videos out, and that's how I uh, started doing it. Like to add, I, I use a uh, dermal tool with a sand the sanding drum on the end of a tremble tool. So you can use anything, but you got to be genteel. Just right That's up. That's why I do it by hand. <laughs> yeah. You're going by power. And I did that a couple times in they That's why it, it's made for a drill, but I don't have it. Uh, you need that? I don't think we need to try it without. Is that okay without it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you Who cares? Be all right. If I need it, I'll turn it on. Okay, I'm going to round this off. Ooh, that's really good. I'm going to change the belt. <coughs> Tell them what you're using to rough it. Okay, I'm using a spindle roughing gouge to, to round it to get it round.
Excuse me? What kind of wood is that? Maple. So I usually take a, uh, if this is, measures about an inch and a half, I usually make it about like two and a, for that amount, two and three quarters long or so. So. I'm going to mark my end here. I'm going to make the outside where it's going to sit on here so I can, can you hear me? I'm going to mark this outside. How much wider do you make it? About a quarter of an inch, so an eighth of an inch on each side about. Okay. Hold on for a minute. What is it now? Can you show in, inside where he made those cuts? Okay, no problem. Thank you for uh, thank you for that. No, I'm serious. Okay, so you got the two radiuses there, right? Yeah. The one radius is going to be going through the center. It's going to be going the through. other radius is going to be the shoulder on top. Right. right. One's the mortise, one's the shoulder. Thank you. And I just did did this. I'm going to take this and put it in the chuck now, and I put this ring here. Just so that when I when I'm turning them, when I turn the top portion for the finial, when I'm working around it, if I get close to the chuck, if I slip, I don't hit the chuck. It's just a safety thing that I do. What do they call this? It's a spur that goes in a chuck. It's handy to, uh, it's just a spur. It's handy to have chuck, it chuck spur. rather than changing a bunch of different things. It is nice, yeah. I always like to tighten from both sides, make sure it doesn't loosen up on me. I'm going to get rid of this.
this out of the way for now. So what are you using now? Using a 3 8 bowl gouge that I've had for about 10 or 11 I'm years. I'm moving it. Stop moving it. Okay, now you can rotate it. Okay, and <laughs> uh, to use a, the uh, sharpening gauge on the one way sharpening gauge, the Wolverine gauge, I ground it back so that it can come back and use as much of the, being cheap, we use as much of the. Uh, Flute it as I can. A detail spindle gouge, and I'll start forming the uh, this part of the. Uh, the bowl gouge, I no, use. No, no, no. Well, your Fresnels are they all unique? You just kind of. Yeah, I go them? along, and uh, sometimes I'll see something, uh, and I'll I'll just do this instead of that. I, I don't, you know. Sometimes I have a pre determined uh, design in my mind that I might try, in which I might, I'm going to try something with a long pointed end on it here. Okay. But, uh, so, but this is a detailed spindle gouge, and I have it ground way back so that I can use these edges almost like a skew. When I, when I, I'll, when I get finishing it, I'll show you when, I, when I'll be dragging it on the edge, just pulling it in, it'll, it'll, it's pretty sharp, it'll, um, It'll, it functions as a skew. Who, who sharpened it for you? <laughs> <laughs> He's easy, isn't he?
to talk, stop and talk about that cut you're making. Okay. I want him to talk about that cut he's making because he's using the, the side of the tool, yeah, just not the it. point. So it's yeah. it's a different cut. It's like a skew, but go ahead. Brian, yeah. I'm sorry. So I'm just putting this up here and putting light pressure. And I, I move over a little bit so I can get the uh, an angle this way to uh, drag it along there. And uh, it, it's pretty smooth right now. I mean, I'm almost hit at 220. I might hit it with some 400 here to smooth it out. So, and, uh, but a lot of times if I start with the tip, then I might rope, come up that way, come, come in with this, come in and turn and shape something, then I can come up there and, and less chance of a catch actually when you're, when you're, uh, cutting up in here. Yeah, it looks, it looks precarious, but in reality it's a, it's a safe cut. Yeah. 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 Nice job. When I go into uh, getting these now, I'm going to take the bevel. I'm going to try and go in at 90 degrees to the uh, spin to the spindle because if I go in at a different angle, I might kick it back. So when I go in here, I'm just going to barely score the wood. I can come down here and just touch it till it scores. And I'll come back here and Just going to try. Sometimes when you do this, some of the edges are a little uh, roughed up. So by touching them and scoring it here, I can clean those up and get them uh, sharp.
I'm going to sand it now. What sandpaper is that? I think it's 320. 320. Mm -hmm. So that's on a 320. It's got a real sharp point on it. I'm going to part it off and it should. I'll double check before I. So point to the shoulder piece. This is the shoulder here. Right. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, uh, before I part it off, I'm going to make sure I got the right. <laughs> Dimension here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dimension? Dimension. <laughs> yeah, that'll fit. And... That'll overlap that. A lot of times when you get these sea urchins, they have a lot of bumps around here, little, little the tentacles come out, and I take a Dremel tool and just Flatten that all out on both sides so that it'll it'll sit down uh, smooth. So I'll part that off now. So how much of the uh, stem do you leave past the shoulder? Yeah, about this, just that little bit amount. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When I part, I like to make sure that I got enough room that the uh, parting tool doesn't jam, so I'll go in a ways. Win a little ways with it. And then come back and take a little extra out so it doesn't uh, doesn't jam on you, because if, if you're parting sometimes with these, especially they don't have the diamond shape on them, if you go in too far and it heats up and expands, all of a sudden it, it'll, uh, like King Kong ripped it out of your hands, you know? So, I, a long time ago I broke one. So that's the bottom. Hold still. I didn't finish. I gotta finish the top now. You get a bigger clap when you finish the top. <laughs> if you finish the top. <laughs> Are you done with that for a while? Which? The bottom part. Can I pass it around? Can I grab this? Just I mean, for what it nice job. So when I do the top piece, I'll only make it about an inch and a half uh, long or so, so it, you know, because the focus is on the bottom. So I'm going to make it an inch and a quarter. Now I'm going to measure the top and bottom the same, the top same way. I'm 
must be boring some people, huh? <laughs> it, happens, it happens all the time. Yeah. When I go to Savannah, I do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So Brian, how, do you, how do you connect them all together? CA loop? No, I just use, uh, well, you can use just uh, type on, but I use a type on uh, thick and quick. And I'll just take, take and glue it in there and set it there and let it sit a while, and then I'll I do the top piece first, and I'll put it in a something around it to set it in like that, and then put the other piece on and leave it. And then I can hang them up. I got a in my in my garage. I got a shelf up there, and I hang a bunch of them up because I as I spray them and uh, finish on them, I just hang them up to let them dry. <clears throat> Mark the center right now with this to uh, then I'm going to drill a hole in it. This is going to be where the eye is for hanging, right? Yep. Use this little pin vise with a micro drill bit in it. Amazon. Put a lot of things on Amazon. So why don't why, why don't you wait until it's all done to drill the hole? Because it's sometimes you miss and forget, <laughs> and I don't want to try and drill it by eyeball. <laughs> so it's a lot easier to do it. Here. Yeah, yeah, right ahead at the first, right at the beginning.
Get some sandpaper. Does that part come back yet? No. Okay. Yeah. I didn't mean to wake you. I didn't know that he was <laughs> 